Hello, <coughs> my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn algebra. Today is our lesson number 95. Lesson number 95. We are at this stage in the game. We are in the process of learning how to solve linear equations. Let's see what we have for today. Lesson number 95. Here is the equation that we have to solve. x plus 3 x plus 3 over 14 plus 3x minus 2 over 4 we are told we are told that it equals that it equals 3. The question simply is what is the value of x? Well first thing first we have a denominator we have a denominator of 14 and a denominator of 4 we don't have a common denominator and this guy has a denominator of 1 this guy has a denominator of 1 we don't have the common denominator we need to have common as in same denominator throughout the equation What's the common denominator that, uh, of 14 and 4? Well, it will be just 14 because 14, well, actually 14, that is weird. 14 and 4. I think we need a common denominator of 28 because 28 we can divide by 4 and 28 we can divide by 14. The common denominator is not going to be 14 because we cannot divide 14 by 4. So it's 28. And if you want to know how to, how to figure out common denominator, Here's the process. You put down your numbers, 14, comma, here's the 14, then the 4, and you start dividing. As long as you can divide both of them, you have to, if there were several numbers here, then you have to be able to divide at least two of those numbers. If there were five or six numbers, as long as you can get at least a pair, you keep on going. So divide by two, you get seven and a two. Now you see, that's it, that's the end of it. Because now you cannot divide, it's just, if you try to divide by seven, it's going to become one and two, and then another two. So you stop right there. So the common denominator, common denominator is common denominator is seven times two times two is four, four times seven is twenty-eight, or two times seven is fourteen, fourteen times two is twenty-eight. So how do we how do we convert this denominator of fourteen into a denominator of twenty-eight? Well, multiply top and bottom by two. Now we have two times fourteen is twenty-eight. How do we convert this four into a denominator of twenty-eight? How many how many fours in twenty eight? Seven of them. So seven fours are twenty eight. Now we have a common denominator of twenty eight there. Let's make this into a, a denominator of twenty eight. Voila. Now that the whole thing has denominator of twenty eight, because every single term in the equation has the same denominator, we can ignore it. For example, for example, for example. Uh, 27 over 3 minus 18 over 3 equals well, 27 over 3 is 9, 18 over 3 is 18 over 3 is 6, 9 minus 3 is 3. Well, this guy has a denominator of 3, this guy has a denominator of 3, but this guy as it stands, this guy as it stands has a denominator of 1. How do we make this? the same denominator of this guy's. But well, we want a denominator of 3 here, so multiply the top and the bottom by 3. Follow. Now, because of the fact that this entire equation, because of the fact that this entire equation, every single term, has a denominator of 3. This one has a denominator of 3, this one has a denominator of 3, and this on this side we have a denominator of 3, 1 times 3 is 3. Because the entire equation has the same denominator throughout the entire, all the very, all the terms, we have a liberty right now to ignore it if we so choose. Let's not make it complicated. Let's ignore it. And if we ignore it, if we ignore it, what do we end up saying? We end up saying that 27 minus 18 equals 3 times 3, which is a valid equation. You see? So let's ignore, let's ignore the denominator of 28. What we have on the top is 2 times 2 times x plus 3 
Then we have then we have positive seven positive seven times three x minus two and we are told that that equals three times twenty eight. Leave that alone for the time being. Two times x is two x two times three is six and here we have three times here we have 7 times 3x, 7 3s are 21, so we have 21 x's. And then we, here we have a, a negative 2 and a positive 7. Positive 7 times negative 2 is going to give us negative 14. And here we have 3 times 28. One. Now we need to combine the like terms. Let's combine the like terms. We have a 3, 2x here and we have a 21x here that gives us 23x. And here we have, here we have a positive 6 and a, and a negative 14. A positive 6 and a negative 14 is going to give us negative 8 equals 3 times 28. Now, in order to get rid of this 8, we're going to have to add 8 to both sides of the equation, which means we do need to figure out what 28 times 3 is in order for us to be able to add 8 to it. It's very difficult to speak in English sometimes. So one more time, in order, in order to get rid of this 8 here, we have to add 8 to both sides of the equation. And before we can do that, we need to figure out, we have to figure out what 3 times 28 is, which is very simple, very straightforward, nothing to it, because we already know that 3 times 25, 3 times 25 is 75. And 28, and 28 is just 3 more than 25, which means 3 3's are 9, and 3 25's are 75. 75 plus 9, I don't know what the hell that is, but I know that 75 plus 10 is 85, therefore 75 plus 8 must be 84. So we're going to cross it out and put down 84 here. And sometimes the things that I say begin to sound like foreign language. There are two possibilities. One is that I am in fact breaking into a foreign language, or foreign to you that is. Or another option you have is to rewind the video and listen to it again. Let's add, let's add 8. This is the part I have to say slowly. Let's add 8 to both sides. So negative 8 and a positive 8 will cancel out. And we are left with 23, 23 x's which comes down here. 23 x's equal, I shouldn't have put the sign and uh, line in the it. I don't want to confuse you. Equals 84 plus 8. Well again, 84 plus 10 I know it's 94, therefore 84 plus 8 must be 92. Now you've got to divide both sides by 23. Now we've got to divide both sides by 23. Both sides of what? I should have said, let's now we have to divide both sides of this equation by 23. So 23 cancels out, and x equals 92 divided by 23. How many 23 is in 92? I don't know. Well, we know it's around 4 because 4 times 20 is 80. 4 times 20 is 80. This is more than 80. Let's multiply it by 4. And of course it is 4 because 4 times... Listen carefully, see if you can make sense. See if you can understand what my logic here. 4 times 20 is 80. And 4 times 3... 4 times 3 would be 12. 12 plus 80 is your 92 right there. So it is 4 times the amount. I'm going to show it to you here. 4 3's are 12. Carry 1. 2 times 4. 4 is 8 plus 1 is 92. So x equals 4. That is our answer. That is our answer. And before we wrap it up, and before we call it a day, I need to put this value back in the original equation. 
and make sure that it works. Make sure that x, this is how a mathematician would say, plug in the value of x and see if x equals to 4 satisfies this original equation that is given to us. It has to satisfy, satisfy it, in other words, it has to work. Let's do it then. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back to the original equation as it was given to us. A word comes to my mind right now. Revert. I was going to say, instead of saying go back to the original equation that we had, what I wanted to say was, I want, I'm going to revert this equation to its original status. The reason I, am, I put it on the blackboard and I'm about to make a big fuss about it is because Many a times I've heard people, or oh, one more comes to my mind just now, many a times I have heard people going around saying, let's revert back to this and that. But you can't bloody revert, revert back, that's redundant. Revert means to go back to its original status. To revert something or to bring it back to its original status, as I said, but we do not go around reverting back. Another thing that annoys the hell out of me when I hear people speak, they would say, in the close vicinity. Oh, the shop that you're looking for is in the close vicinity of the bank. What the hell? Vicinity means something close to it. Something close to something. It's redundant. It's redundant. It's, it's not necessary. The close is not necessary. And you do not go around saying the word back. It's not necessary. Do you understand? Anyway, I'm going to take a deep breath. I feel better. Let's go back to our original equation or let's revert to our original equation as it was and see if x equals to 4 works. Here was the original equation. So again, keep in mind x equals 4. x equals 4, 4 plus 3 is 7, 7 over 14 is half. This part is half and this part is half then this part better be two and a half because half and two and a half will equal three. Let's see if this is two and a half. X equals four. Four times three is twelve. Twelve minus two is ten. Ten over four. Ten over four. We know that eight over four is two and ten over four would be two and a half. Because we have ten quarters, you see? 10 divided by 4, 10 quarters. Well, I know 4 quarters make a dollar. Another 4 quarters will make another dollar. I have 10 quarters. 4, four quarters, 4 quarters, and 2 quarters. So 4 quarters will make a dollar. Another 4 quarters will make another dollar. That's 2 dollars. And the remaining 2 quarters is my half a dollar. So it's 2 and a half dollars. If you want to think in terms of money. So 2 and a half plus a half will give us the 3 that we need. One more time I'm going to show you. X equals to 4. I'll be putting it back in here. X equals to 4. 4 plus 3 equals 7. 7 divided by 14 is half. Let's put 4, x equals to 4 here. 3 times 4 is 12. 12 minus 2 is 10. 10 divided by 4. 10 divided by 4 is 2 and a half. 2 and a half plus a half gives us the 3 that we need. Looks like everything is hunky dory. Now don't ask me where I learned it, okay? I will see you tomorrow on day number 96. I know.